Good morning. My name is Dave and welcome to my channel. Here I am at Soakwa chain up area. Just um just before you start the climb up, um well you've already started the climb but going up the Kokahala into BC. So if you watched the last video we left that off um, when I was down in Federal Way making my delivery. So we got the delivery done. It took six and a half hours, mind you, but we got the delivery done. And then we ran empty from Suaqua. Uh, from sorry from Federal Way up to Surrey BC we dropped the empty trailer in our terminal at Surrey BC and then bobtailed around to the shipper where we picked this load up so this load has, has three drops on it I've got uh, Lethbridge on Sunday morning, Medicine Hat Sunday afternoon, and Regina on Monday morning. So, keep me busy on the way back. It's uh, pretty cold today. But no snow forecast, um, unlike home. We got quite a dump of snow yesterday back at home. Look at the colour of this. That was, um, that was uh, because of the, uh, the snow we had out back in Saskatchewan on the way out here. Look at the colour of it. So we're looking at getting home uh, Monday. As I say, this is uh, Friday, Friday morning, Friday the 11th of November. And yes, we will remember them. Remember those that have fallen and those that are still serving and the families that they leave behind. So I'll leave it with you, we'll get some footage again going over the mountains hopefully. And we'll catch you guys later, cheerio for now. In the last video, I, um, I videoed, uh, well I've done a time lapse going down the, down the smasher, down the Coquihalla. And that started that Zopkius brake check. So here I am on the way back up the Coquihalla. And I've just passed Zopkius, so I'm already up the Smasher. And just coming up to the top of Coquihalla Summit. It's a decent day today. Hasn't been, uh, hasn't been icy or, or slippy at all. I've only got about 12 ton on, so not a whole lot of weight for going over the mountains. Haven't worked out a plan of how I'm going to do this yet. I think I'm, I'm thinking probably just go to Golden tonight, which from here is probably maybe five and a half, six hours from here. And that'll only leave me about five hours to do tomorrow to get to Lethbridge. And my delivery is until 11 o'clock on Monday. So, all kinds of time on this one. It's actually store deliveries I've got on delivering to uh, three stores. 
I explained in one of the videos about LTL and uh, and uh, full truck load. So this, is, even though I've got three drops on, this would still be classed as full truck load. It's from one shipper. I had three store deliveries coming back across Canada. So there we are, we're at the Kokala summit, 4,081 feet elevation. I'm going to make a stop off at a place called Kamloops, be there in about an hour and a half. going to stop off there and uh, get a shower and have a bit of a break and then carry on to Golden for the night. So we'll leave that there and we'll be back later on. So it's now Friday afternoon and we're just east of Revelstock. Uh, I'm starting to climb up the, the mountains again. We'll be going over Rogers Pass pretty soon. Uh, I think this area, this is well this will be Albert Canyon around this area. Uh, and then we go up over Rogers Pass. Another beautiful, beautiful part of in BC. Absolutely stunning. And hopefully you, you can see the views up ahead there. So we're going to stay in Golden tonight. I've got a bit of a plan come together. I'm going to stay in Golden tonight. Tomorrow we're only going to drive from Golden to Calgary. With the diversion, probably about four and a half hours driving, that's all. But we're going to stay in Calgary then because I can get fuel, I can get a shower can get some tea all there at the truck stop in Calgary because there's nothing there's no truck stop down in Lethbridge so if I went there and parked there ready for my delivery I'd have no facilities I could get something to eat but there's there's no showers fuel's a bit more expensive down there so I'm, I'm going to go via Calgary which adds about 34 35 kilometers onto the journey But it's still better than sitting down in Lethbridge with nothing from, you know, from lunchtime tomorrow, so. So instead of that, I'll, I can drive straight to Calgary tomorrow, be there for about lunchtime, get fuel, get a shower, get some to eat, and then leave there about, about eight o'clock on Sunday morning to get down to Lethbridge. Probably about two and a half hours from Calgary to Lethbridge, Sunday morning. I'll also check the weather first of all though, before I decide that's where I'm staying tomorrow, just to make sure we're not going to get any surprises driving down there on Sunday morning. But that's where we're up to for now. Once I've got, once I've got me fuel in Calgary, that'll, that'll get me all the way home from there. But I, We'll, we'll stop somewhere and top it up again, probably at Balgoni, where you've seen me on my last video. Maybe just uh, top it up there to get me back, up, get me home and then off to leave on the next trip. It's all been well, I'll be home, be home Monday evening off this. Stay at home till of two days at home again, stay home till Thursday. I hope you guys can see this view. I really do. Beautiful. So that's it for now, guys. We'll be back later. Cheerio for now. We're not too far from the, the summit of Rogers Pass now. 
So I thought I'd give you just a little bit of an insight as to what Rogers Pass is and, and where it is. Rogers Pass is, is situated on the on Highway 1, the Trans-Canada Highway 1. The Trans-Canada runs the, the width of the whole of Canada. And here in BC, Rogers Pass is between Revelstoke and Golden. Rogers Pass is the second highest pass on, on the Trans-Canada. Second only to Kicking Horse, which is just a little bit further east to the other side of Golden. Um, Rogers Pass is it's thir 1300 metres, 1330 metres high and gets an average of 14 metres of snow every year. You know, we've got, we've got a bit of snow here just now, but by the end of, uh, by the end of winter, or even halfway through winter, uh, the snow piled at the side of the road will be as high as this truck. It also has um, what we call snow sheds dotted along this highway. Snow sheds are in high avalanche areas and it's to help protect the travellers. They actually design, in these mountains they've designed uh, avalanche routes routes that the, the avalanche take and they actually trigger avalanches themselves. They bring in the big guns and uh, fire a cannon into the snow to cause the avalanche. Dotted along the highway here you'll see some, some like the area on the, on the right there. That has a, a big concrete pad in the middle of it with ground anchors. They bring the cannon out and they, they attach the ground anchors into that concrete pad and fire fire around off into the mountains there to get to to bring on an avalanche and they also they also drop the the detonators off from helicopters for avalanche control. So while they do that, the road's closed. Um, the snow sheds uh, where it occurs naturally. We'll see when, once we get up to the summit, just as we cross over the side, there's there's three on the, the west side, there are three avalanche, three snow sheds on the west side, and five, I think it is, on the east side, yeah, five on the east side. During the winter, you especially you know after heavy snowfall you you do get caught up in avalanche control quite a bit they close the road cause an avalanche and then they have to they have to clear that up before you, you can let you through again so it's quite often closed for a couple of hours at a time just for avalanche control or or while they wait to bring in the big guns to to cause the avalanche they stop traffic if it's getting uh, it's getting pretty dangerous. So this is the last uh, climb up now, up to the, the summit. Again, I'll leave the camera running, and I'll leave it running through the next couple of snow sheds on the on the east side there as well. So that's about it for today. Because once I get over the other side and drop down into Golden. That's it for the night for me. So I'll be back with you guys sometime, sometime tomorrow. Take care. Senorita, what's your name? Take a ride on my one-way train Goes downtown, gets there slow Take a ride on my one-man show Get your love on the line Good morning and welcome back It's Friday morning 
11.35 local time and here we are in Sparwood still in BC Sparwood sits on Highway 3 uh, just inside the BC Alberta border inside the line there so it puts me about two hours two and a half hours west of my delivery for tomorrow morning at 11 so yeah we've got 23 and a half hours uh, to get to my delivery Sparwood is, is famous or infamous if you want to call it that it's a it's got a couple of huge um, open cast coal mines but as a landmark and a tourist destination it's it's famous for what I hope you can see right ahead of us there what was at one time the largest truck in the world that was in operation back in the early 70s and even when it retired it was still at the time the largest truck in the world, the largest twin axle truck in the world. It stands at over 24 foot tall and the tyres, the tyres themselves are over 12 foot tall. So it must have been quite a beast at the time. Uh, obviously no longer the largest truck in the world but they still advertise it as such. And Especially during the summer, you see them all lining up to get the photograph taken in, in front of the, the, the truck. So that was a quick glimpse of Sparwood. And we'll be back later on. Cheerio for now. You can hear me okay for the wind. And this is Frank Slide. Back in 1903, there was a massive landslide here that wiped out a small village called Frank. Frank was only a village of about 90 people, and the landslide actually killed. Around 70 of them. Sorry about any wind or traffic noise. Or even me being out of breath. Bit of a goat track just to get up here. So anyway, that's uh, Frank's slide. Be back later. Good morning. It's been a couple of days now, but here we are back with you, uh, back in Saskatchewan again. So I got rid of those three store deliveries that I had. A bit slow going that was. Uh, just because of the delivery times more than anything. You know, delivering at 11 o'clock in the morning, by the time they finish the deliveries and then you get moving again, you're, it's, it's lunchtime before you're even starting. But we got them done. We're on our way up to Yorkton now, Yorkton, Saskatchewan, where we're going to drop this empty, switch for a loaded one, and take that back to Steinbach. Happy days. So we'll be home tonight, even if we, well, we can make it tonight, but we'll, we'll see how I feel later on. If not, it'll be tomorrow morning back in the yard. I tried to get my truck booked into the shop this morning. Um, very short notice, I know, but Friday was a holiday over here, so I couldn't speak to them on Friday. This morning was the first chance I got. I had a bit of a water leak. Uh, I was letting water in up on the roof somewhere, and they found where the water leak was coming from, but it stained all the headlining. Now it's taken weeks for the headlining to come in stock so they can change that, but it's in stock now. Uh, it's a warranty job, so we'll get that done uh, at the end of next trip, all being well. It's 
once we pick this load up in Yorkton, we've got a bit of messing about to do. We have to we have to go to the government scale, which is a little bit out of the way, to go and scale it, make sure it's uh, US legal. It's going to be a £44,000 loaded on it, which uh, takes you up close to the maximum limit for the US. Which is, uh, they, the US run lighter weights than they do in Canada, so it'll be legal for me to take back to Steinbach. But they, the company wants to make sure it's legal for going to the States before I take it back to the yard, because once it's back to the yard, there's nothing they can do with it then. So, a couple of hours up to Yorkton now. It feels like I haven't done much for the last couple of days. It's been a real, real lazy couple of days, but hey oh, Let's get some trucking done. And we'll be back later. Right, so that's us. Switch trailers in Yorkton. But now we have to go around to the government scale to, to weigh it. Uh, if they want the weights, send it into the office before we leave here. Um, these loads are, are pretty heavy, so. We'll get ourselves around to the scale. I'll see you there. This is us just approaching the scale now, so we can weigh this load. Get it within the, uh, the weight for running to the US. These scales are usually manned by uh, DOT. Making sure that everyone's running legal. Uh, it's not actually open today, so there'll be nobody else here. I can just go in and run it over the scale. So, could be a little heavy on my drives looking at my gauges. Oh, there's somebody in the scale though. There's definitely DOT in there. Well, we have to jot the weights down as well, so let's just get that ready. By four seventy. Fifteen four hundred, so it's right on the, the limit. Right on the limit for the states. So I'm not taking it, so it is going to depend on um, who's actually taking it. But we've got a bit to spare on the back axle there, it's only 14,820. So they could slide the tandems, give themselves a bit of, bit more um, to play with on, on the uh, weights. Alright guys, that's the scale. Got some paperwork to do, some messages to send, and we'll be back later. Right, so that's all the paperwork done, and I'm heading back to Steinbach, heading home at last.
I've got 585 kilometers, so it's going to take about six and a quarter hours to get home, six and a half hours maybe. It's already three o'clock in the afternoon, so we're looking at nine o'clock, half nine before we're back in the yard tonight. Bit of a late one, but we didn't start till uh, half past eight this morning either, so we've got plenty of time to do it. And then we'll be taking a couple of days off. So it'll be dark by the time I get back to the yard, so we won't be doing any, any filming back there, any videoing. You won't see much. Be disappointing, really. So I'm going to wrap this one up here now. I'm going to say goodbye and thanks for watching and all that good stuff. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, click like and subscribe. And don't forget, leave me some feedback in the comments. I, unless you get feedback, I, I don't know what you guys are thinking, whether you like it, you don't like it, what you want to see, what you, what you want to see more of, less of. But I don't know, so let me know. And we'll be back on the next trip. Thanks guys and cheerio for now. Stay safe.